We figured we'd take a break from sketches to bring you something informative. We call it Mother Nature. That bitch is crazy! So I'm always on the prowl for new and interesting things, especially to eat. And at the grocery store I found this wacky, if not phallic, object called Monstera Deliciosa. Which sounds like something straight out of Harry Potter. Monstera Deliciosa! It's not Monstera Deliciosa, it's Monstera Deliciosa. Brilliant! Packaging and everything. You're good. I like whoever named this fruit because it makes sense. I can never remember the scientific names of things. Like, a mosquito is called the Anopheles quadrimacalapanembendipecades. Kind of. If it were called Vampirus malaria caria, then I'd remember it. Oh, that, don't let it bite ya. Its scientific name sounds exactly like what it is. Monstera deliciosa. The thing is huge, and it tastes good. M. deliciosa is mmm deliciosa. The thing that's big is the plant. The f it's related to the philodendrons, and it can grow like 60 feet tall, and has these wacky leaves that have holes in them, so it's also sometimes known as Swiss cheese plant, or the window pane plant or something like that. This grows naturally in the tropical jungles of Panama and Mexico, those areas. All parts of the Monstera deliciosa plant are toxic, including the unripe fruit. Its fruits take like a year or more to mature, and you must not eat them until they are mature because they will poison your ass. The fruits have a high concentration of oxalic acid, so they irritate your mucosa. They can cause a burning, swelling, and apparently even death. Oh, it was his first day of being a vegetarian. Do not eat them unless they are ripe. How do you know they're ripe? Those little kernels pop off of them. Yes, people, this fruit peels itself. It peels itself! And it doesn't peel itself all, of, all at once, so you have to like eat it inch by inch. That's kind of pervy sounding. If you want to speed up the ripening process, you can, of course, stick it into a paper bag. Here's a little tidbit, folks. Why do things ripen faster when they're in paper bags? As fruit ripens, it releases ethylene gas. <laughs> and so by putting it in a brown paper bag, you trap that gas closer to the fruit. Oh, come on, man. Ew. Really? Right in my face. So thereby ripening it. Faster. And even the ripe fruit can irritate some sensitive people. I'm a, I'm a pretty sensitive person, I think. It's like the corn of the cob of pineapple bananas. Now, I'm no Monstera Deliciosa expert, but I'm just assuming all this black crap in there is okay. Because it came with it. This thing does freak me out a little because it's kind of fuzzy, white, and I don't know if it's moldy, it's been exposed, peeling itself, but I'm just gonna go with it. Looks pretty nasty, but tastes pretty good. I guess if you're slightly more refined than me, you can eat it, cut it into slices, and mm, nibble off around the center. You don't eat the core, I guess. Let's see about that. Yeah, it doesn't, ugh, it doesn't taste like I want to eat that, so don't, don't do that. And it might poison your ass, I don't know. Don't put nothing past this plant. I guess if you're even more refined, you could probably pluck the kernels off with a, a fork, but I sure as hell ain't that refined. Personally, I'll stick to my barbaric turkey leg gnawing method where you just hold it and eat it. Hopefully I shouldn't be concerned about that little tinginess in my mouth. It's not stingy, but it's something noticeable going on in there. Just, just take note, there's a little something. On second thought, I, uh, my face is kind of itchy, and that, that pan that's in the bed now, mm, I think I need to take a Benadryl. Free range females!